Thank you. Thank you, Enrico and uh, Sandra, for this invitation. Um, yes, the, the, the issue uh, I would like to address today is uh, uh, to understand what's based the concept of expression. Um, that I consider uh, necessary connected to that one of abstraction has in a theoretical context that rejects dualism. Uh, the separation of mind, body, spirit, matter, thought, reality, subject and object. Such a theoretical framework in which I place my philosophical work uh, is that one proposed uh, by Deleuze alone or with Guattari, so a thought of immanence uh, radically anti-dualist. And I, I add that this uh, line is uh, a minoritarian line in Italy, because maybe um, after yesterday you uh, could uh, have the impression that uh, in Italy all <laughs> philosophers work uh, in this kind of uh, perspective. But obviously um, this is a... Um, minoritarian line of the um, contemporary Italian uh, philosophy. Um, before I, I start my, my path, um, which consists of four points uh, plus one, the last one, uh, I would like to make uh, um, a premise. And it's a somewhat uh, reckless <laughs> premise. Uh, and when I think of the procedures of expression and abstraction, I think at the same time uh, at philosophical practice and artistic practice. So I do not deny the differences between us, obviously, but I assume both as expressive practice, expressive and creative practice of thought. So, um, first point, uh, immanence, a central concept in uh, Deleuze thought, in his works uh, and um, in, in his works with uh, Felix uh, Guattari. Mm -hmm. And various figures of immanence can be found in many texts. Um, a proper treatment of this topic can be found uh, in uh, What is Philosophy? That is a book uh, um, uh, of 1991. But today, um, I take up, I assume, as a theoretical framework uh, for this intervention, above all, the project of A Thousand Plateau, Capitalism and Schizophrenia, a work the two wrote together, published in 1980. Um, I, I didn't know uh, what kind of audience uh, I will have today, so I, I uh, propose, uh, maybe all of you are uh, very aware of this topic, but I, I propose a short definition of immanence uh, for uh, uninitiated ones, I would say. Uh, it is a term that came into use in medieval philosophy, uh, where, it's designated, um, where it designates these acts, such as seeing or feeling, whose end resides in themselves. And it became widespread mainly because of its opposition to the concept of a transcendence. So according to this antithesis, immanent is any reality that does not transcend the sphere of another reality, i.e. that does not exist separate and independent from it, but it is in a relationship of mutual co-essentiality with it. So Spinoza had contrasted Descartes uh, in his division between res cogitans and res extens, a mind and body, with the affirmation of a plane of immanence. Uh, the need to erase any presupposition that could take on the function of a transcendent principle. Spinoza considers all entities not as substances, but as mode of the single substance, as maybe you already know, 
uh, manners of being that is a single and absolutely infinite substance. So entities and being are in a position of mutual immanence. Entities cannot be distinguished on the basis of an external paradigm that transcends them. The plane of immanence on Deleuze and Guattari is uh, metaphysically consistent with Spinoza's single substance, God of nature, God, uh, Dio si natura, in the sense that immanence is not immanent to substance, but rather that immanence is substance, that immanence is immanent to itself. So the enemy of this line of thought is, of course, dualism, thinking that body and mind, subject and object, are separate. And in a philosophy of immanence, thought does not represent being from the outside, just to um, take some words that we uh, already discussed yesterday, that one of representation in Alessandro for example, thought does not represent being from the outside, but is part of it. It is therefore a philosophy of the surface, of, is a cartography. Uh, but Deleuze and Guattari also write pluralism and um, monism. The plane of being that coincides with that of thought is a polyphonic processual plane. So it is a single substance, but it is polyphonic, uh, never identical to itself, populated with multiplicity. What must be absolutely avoided is the separation between two planes, the description of being as matter separate from the ideal uh, plane. Nonetheless, Deleuze and Guattari insist in this book, and I would say elsewhere, uh, that the dualism transcendence never ceases to reappear, and that thinking immanence is a task that must always be begun anew. So it is the, um, maybe we can, uh, um, can think uh, uh, at the, the, the question that Jim uh, posed uh, yesterday. There is a, a sort of uh, a go, <laughs> go uh, forward and go back. No, there is a, a task that must be always be begun anew. It is a um, transcendence never ceases to reappear. A quotation from A Thousand Plateau. We employ a dualism of models only in order to arrive to, at a process that challenges all models. Each time, mental correctives are necessary to undo the dualism we had no wish to construct, but through which we pass. Arrive at the magic formula we all seek. This is a um, very famous uh, quotation from uh, A Thousand Plateau. Arrive at the magic formula we all seek. Pluralism equal monism. Via all the dualism that are the enemy, an entirely necessary enemy, the furniture we are forever rearranging. So if if this of immanence is the theoretical uh, framework, theoretical paradigm, um, very minoritarian in a, a perspective uh, as the European uh, contemporary one that uh, starts from dualism, um, the, the problem, my problems um, are how then does the question of expression arise in a thought that proposes immanence, that wants to overcome dualism? How do we define expressive form in a theoretical framework that seeks contact with vital forces, with the substance, with the life itself, immanent, impersonal, free from representation? How do we describe expression without making it something personal, individual, subjective, separated from what it expresses? So uh, first problem, how we 
to define expressive form in a framework that uh, is looking for a contact with the vital disorganized forces, one, and two, how we did, do we describe expression without making it something personal, something subjective and individual, and then separated from what it expresses? Are there expression and abstraction that is not merely representative, but connected, intertwined with life itself? Um, I would say also that these questions are theoretical, ontological questions that nevertheless also have a very strong impact existentially, politically also, um, as they define a particular way of thinking uh, and being in the world. So uh, let's answer, trying, uh, try uh, answer, uh, knowing that uh, this is a task uh, always at risk of failure. It is the furniture we are forever rearranging. Second uh, point, expression. In a thousand plateau, the concept of expression appears in some pages devoted to, to the concept of refrain, ritornello. Ritornel, <laughs> which is configured as the possibility of extracting fro, fro, from chaos. Uh, it's a refrain, but it is not only uh, musical chaos, of course. So the possibility of extracting from chaos, from life itself, understood as a set of disorganized form, forces, a form that nevertheless is not stable, is not fixed, but remains in motion. Rhythm is what can arise in the transition between one environment and another, in the interval, in the transition between two forms, such as night and day, animal and human. To be rhythmic is the difference between two environments, the transition from one state to another. The refrain is thus that which allows one to find a sort, a sort of center, not a center, to organize an environment, but also to open it up by projecting it outward. Extraction of a form from the plane of forces, but also a rhythm as a rhythm that allows the form not to crystallize. Two authors, Deleuze and Gattari, um, link the theme of refrain and rhythm as an activity of selection, organization, extraction, and also abstraction to space and territory. Since the environments discussed here are spatiotemporal units in the making, teeming with life and movement. Thought as the production of novelty is characterized here as surface movement, a series of horizontal assemblages. Uh, this is the uh, translation of a, a very important concept uh, uh, of Deleuze and Gattari, that is uh, agencement in French. So horizontal assemblages, um, sorry, agencement, that means uh, uh, the possibility to um, uh, an encounter between two heterogeneous and radically different terms. So, as the production of novelty is characterized as a series of assemblages, rhizomatic connection, and flat multiplicities in which actions and expressions are always situated on a plane of immanence. In this context, however, the concept of a territory, beginning with its spatial connotation, 
acquires the more general function of a theoretical operator. Territorialization is what is produce, produced when the rhythm becomes expressive. Incorporating certain parts of various environments and giving them a certain qualitative homogeneity. Expression is thus what produces a territory, a territorialization, uh, they, they say. Uh, for example, it is the emergence of certain colors, sounds, smells, figures that makes a series of environments or a part of them a true territory, a territory that is not a measure, is a rhythm. Territories, in fact, uh, Guattari uh, would write a few years later uh, in Cosmos, Cosmos, territories are not objects, but intensive repetition. So expression, um, it's the possibility to um, produce a territory that is not a measure, but is a rhythm. It is intensive and not extensive. So this spatial connotation is something that helps uh, Deleuze and Guattari to think uh, on a plane, on a surface, uh, to not create uh, a separation between two planes, but obviously uh, the question is not a measurement, a, 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 a territory, a quantitative territory. From the affirmation of the emergence of expressiveness as the moment of emergence of a territory, also, also follows the definition of territory as the effect of art. By calling art the emergence of a territory, Deleuze and Guattari defend an idea of artistic practice as the appearance of expressive qualities that do not belong to a subject, but rather produce a singularity, a signature, a style. In the, the quotation uh, from Thousand Plateau, the expressive is primary in relation to the possessive. Expressive qualities or matters of expression are necessarily appropriative and constitute a having more profound than the a having more profound than being. Not in the sense that these qualities belong to a subject, but in the sense that they delineate a territory that will belong to the subject that carries or produces them. These qualities are signatures, but the signature, the proper name, is not the constituted mark of a subject, but the constituting mark of a domain, an abode. The signature is not the indication of a person, it is the chancy formation of a domain. Maybe with this term domain, uh, here the Los Anguattari are referring also to Kant and the uh, introduction of the third critique when he uh, talks about, he wrote, writes about uh, uh, the difference between territory and domain in the art, in, in, the, in the, the judgment. Okay, but this is another story. <laughs> So by following the relationships between expressive materials, by indulging the relationship between the various territories with what they enclose within them, but also and above with the outside, from the signature, we arrive at the style defined an open set of expressive references. So the assemblages here are no longer internal to the territory, but are linked with external motif, open to a new relationship with the outside. Here, the territory is, trans I, I'm quoting, 
transportable and elastic, contains within itself the condition of its overcoming, binds to other environments in a network of expressions and rhythmic concatenations. The territory, the expression, craves for it aspires to deterritorialization, is always ready to disengage, to disconnect and open up. The territory delimits, identifies, but also produces a change and opens a passage to the outside. So the refrain, the retournel, produces an expression, an expressive territory, which thus shows all its ambiguity from being a territory, a, spe a spatial temporal unit, it becomes a power that opens toward completely unforeseen connections. The problem of such a network of assemblages, which occupies many pages devoted to the refrain, and which the two authors propose as an answer to the question, what keeps us bound is precisely that of finding a consolidation of the forces in a form that, that does not crystallize them, that binds the heterogeneous elements without them ceasing to be heterogeneous. Producing uh, these assemblages, to produce these assemblages is always a machine this is a concept uh, uh, very important for this project, uh, uh, Capitalism and Schizophrenia, the concept of machine that Deleuze uh, um, uh, takes uh, um, from the encounter with uh, Felix Guattari. To produce these assemblages is always a machine which is triggered within the plane of immanence, a machine that engages the territorial assemblage and opens it to other assemblages. So in this plane of immanence populated by assemblages and um, <laughs> territories between expressive forms, um, work machines. Uh, there are machines that produce novelty and uh, links between uh, the form. This concept is introduced uh, in the 70s, and uh, it is a concept that, that uh, developed in the encounter between Deleuze and Guattari. Um, this is mm, my mm, interpretation, but <laughs> I think it's, uh, uh, it's possible to say it, uh, to express it uh, in a clear way. It is a concept that developed, uh, um, it is an evolution of another concept, that one of structure, still used by Deleuze in different repetition and uh, logic of sense. So at first, uh, Deleuze is still a structuralist, then he abandons the concept for, of structure for that of the machine with Guattari. I, I tried also a short definition of structuralism. Uh, we mean, by structuralism, we mean the theory that recognizes in every object of study a structure, a whole whose elements have value not autonomously, but in the relation of one to the other. What interests us about structuralism is the affirmation of the primary character of a system, language, uh, kinship, structures, uh, the unconscious, societies, and so on, with respect to the subjects that act within it. So primary character of a system um, with respect to the subject that act within it. Hence, uh, the point is uh, decentralization of the subject, um, which is, who is the result of the structure in which it finds itself. Um, 
meeting with Guattari favors uh, a move away from structuralism of Deleuze, uh, as it always seeks uh, invariance, the elements that do not vary, that are fixed within the structure. So uh, what remains of structuralism in the Deleuze uh, and Guattari thought is the idea that there is no play presupposed to that of relations, the idea that the subject is the outcome of assemblages, but Deleuze and Guattari reject the idea of studying a system as fixed, as stable, as invariant. So to open the structure to the event, we must think that in every system, they are also, there are also, uh, there are always, there are um, only flexible relations. And so uh, the structure is replaced by the machine, which allows transformation movement. Machines are continually making and unmaking, to uh, refer to the title of our conference, themselves. Uh, Guattari wrote uh, in Cosmosis, structure is associated with a sense of eternity Machine has to do with precariousness and destruction, with finitude. The machine moves and transforms, and the machine produces. But its movement and its production of reality are irregular, unexpected. Uh, someone uh, during the conference said, uh, uh, the machine is crazy. It's an uh, unexpected uh, production. And above all, um, so the production of a machine is irregular, unexpected, and above all, essential to the plane of being, of reality, is immanent. In fact, the machine produces the reality of which it is itself a part through machinic assemblages, i.e., connections between heterogeneous terms. Quotation, that in fact is the distinction we would like to propose between machine and assemblage. A machine is like a set of cutting edges that insert themselves into the assemblage, undergoing deterritorialization and draw variations and mutations of it. For there are no mechanical effects. Effects are all well machinic. In other words, depend on a machine that is plugged into an assemblage and has been freed through deterritorialization. Deterritorialization. As a general rule, a machine plugs into the territorial assemblage of a species and opens it to other assemblages causes it to pass through the inter-assemblages of that species. So uh, in, this, um, uh, in the language of this quotation, we can see also the, uh, the difficulty to propose uh, a, a tool of production that is the production itself, in the production itself. In the two volumes of Capitalism and Schizophrenia, so anti oedipus and uh, A Thousand Plateau, the machines presented are many. Desiring machines, war machines, literary, social, semiotic, unconscious machines. In the second volume, A Thousand Plateau, more and more importance is given to the concept of the abstract machine. Uh, another um, definition, this is um, a sort of initial proposal of a, of a definition um, that I, I try. We could say, uh, paradoxically, that the abstract machine is the concrete way in which a thought of immanence is actually exercised. In fact, abstract machines are not transcendent ideas, but operate concrete assemblages on the plane of immanence. 
it should not be thought, however, then the machine exists first. There is no abstract machine without concrete assemblages, and vice versa, vice versa. The abstract machine is a kind of diagram. It is a singular. In that, it is a diagram of a concrete assemblage. It is creative in that it proposes to each assemblage its own way out. It operates by matter, not by substance, by function, not by form. What is essential in the identification of an abstract machine is the evaluation of its degree of power of metamorphosis. To quotation, um, in truth, the nature of the abstract machine is the most general problem. There is no reason to tie the abstract to the universal or the constant. That is uh, something that uh, did the concept of structure, for example. Or to efface the singularity of abstract machine insofar as they are built around variables and variation. Uh, another short quotation, uh, the diagrammatic or abstract machine does not function to represent even something real, but rather construct a real that is yet to come, a new type of reality. This real abstract is totally different from the fictitious abstraction of a supposedly pure machine of expression. It is an absolute, but one that is neither undifferentiated nor, nor transcendent. In conclusion, thinking being without separating being and thought is an operation that finds an ally, a tool in the concept of the machine that is a structure in motion, in metamorphosis, irregular, the production of a reality from within the reality it produces. This structure allows the production of an expressive territory in art, but I would say philosophy everywhere, that is open to the outside, that is near to life in itself. And um, I would like to um, conclude uh, opening, uh, so uh, not with a very um, precise conclusion, but just to um, open this uh, possibility of thinking uh, um, the concept of the expression, of expression in this uh, um, framework uh, by showing you um, uh, an artistic project that I carried uh, on with an um, illustrator, uh, Francesca Balducci. Um, it, it is a project that uh, um, we are carrying out together uh, and which concerns, the uh, first of all, the possibility of an effective cartography of certain areas of the city of Rome. So the title uh, is... Uh, um, in Italian, la città inservibile, that uh, means uh, inservibile, unusable uh, city, uh, in the sense that Rome is a very difficult city, uh, useless uh, some, uh, uh, many times, but also in the sense that uh, um, La città è inservibile uh, because uh, it's not at our service. And in this uh, uh, kind of difficulties, we can find maybe an opening, a sort of freedom and possibility to create something new. So um, practically, we work a lot uh, in the... Uh, uh, some areas of Rome uh, that have, had, has uh, an effective uh, meaning for us. Uh, and then I write, uh, um, I wrote uh, some um, text and uh, Francesca um, 
draws this, uh, these paintings. Um, and uh, um, I, I just wanted to show the, the evolution of her work because uh, in this um, uh, graphics, uh, the, these are more illustrative, more figurative, but they are actually born from her imagination. It is a, a, a project uh, not uh, uh, that one uh, of uh, La Città Inservibile. And those... This one is the... Um, those of uh, 2022 are more abstract, uh, but they seem to me to be at the same time more in touch with life as it becomes. Uh, in fact, they arise from real uh, immersions uh, uh, in the urban context. And uh, I, 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 I find, I find uh, there also um, a sort of abstract machines, as I, I can imagine it, but just to show you just for your imagination. Thank you. We have some questions or comments. I just one uh, short, maybe stupid question. Uh, when you uh, talked about uh, the, the question of the machine, uh, in my mind, perhaps the image of the uh, machine learning in the artificial intelligence, and uh, I am ask, I, I'm, I'm asking if uh, mm, now that we use this concept of machine in relation with artificial intelligence, machine learning, something like that, that uh, concept of machine has something in common with this uh, new concept of machine. Okay, maybe I'm not so familiar with the concept of machine learning, so I, uh, I don't know if I answer uh, really uh, appropriately. Uh, but uh, um, the idea of machine in Deleuze and Guattari is uh, uh, the contrary of something uh, uh, automatic, uh, mechanical, and expected. So I don't know if the algorithm is... Uh... Uh, they, they try to uh, construct something that uh, uh, is not, uh, not automatic. Okay. But I don't know if they <laughs> really... I think that this uh, this kind of figures uh, in Deleuze alone and with Guattari, uh, machine, uh, crystal, uh, rhizome, that is a botanical concept, the, the, the roots that uh, uh, grows uh, horizontally, um, have in common the idea of um, uh, a non-human subject, a, a non-human personal uh, way of thinking the position of the, the subject. So um, machine is something uh, um, that produces uh, something unexpected, uh, that uh, uh, produces a movement of, of subjectivation, but it is not a subject. And um, uh, it's I don't know, also in the in the book about cinema, but maybe June uh, after, later could, uh, could say something more. Um, Deleuze, uh, for this, um, uh, the part of the book uh, uh, where he uh, wrote, writes about virtual, um, he is associated with the, the virtual uh, reality, uh, he became a sort of prophet of uh, artificial uh, or uh, intelligence or uh, or something like that. Um, I think that it is not uh, a taboo, <laughs> but uh, we have to imagine a development of this uh, kind of procedures, uh, very free and very. Uh, a production of real novelty, a 
creation of something new uh, that began anew uh, every time. So if it's, if it's, it is possible, maybe, why not? <laughs> Um, can we say that in these uh, uh, abstract machines is the town, is Rome, which uh, expresses itself uh, through Francesca Balducci? And um, in this sense, there is not a subject that uh, uh, produces such images, but is uh, the so-called object that expresses itself uh, through the participation of the of what I, uh, yesterday I called the subjectless subject. Yeah, thank you, Felicia, for this uh, comment because uh, yes, I I I, I maybe I, I didn't explain uh, this project uh, really clearly uh, because uh, I I wanted to be more less European and uh, opening at the end instead of uh, conclude uh, with an explanation as uh, we, we 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 said yesterday with uh, with Enrico. But yes, the, the the idea is that one. We we work we. Uh, right, we draw, and at the end also, this is an important part of the project. Of the uh, we um, propose, we, we create a sort of um, a code in uh, where these uh, little figures um, could be uh, could mean in a very wide sense something of um, relative to the to affects and affection and we propose uh, this to a group of person and alessandro was there uh, um, asking them to um, create a map of rome uh, where this machine could uh, go <laughs> could could stay uh, expressing something. Uh, so the idea is uh, um, these are a machine, but also um, expressive form in a sense of a territory uh, that uh, expresses uh, an homoge a quality, uh, an homogeneity of quality. Uh, for example, this kind of figures with this um, tiny. Uh, Cuttings. Cuttings uh, are uh, was uh, in the mind of uh, Francesca something uh, related to a very difficult situation that we uh, encountered in Rome. Um, and yes, uh, the idea is uh, that this is the the territory that expresses and produces itself, the machine that uh, produces itself, uh, because the first. Uh, part of the project was uh, we go in the city, I uh, bring you in the part, the affected, my affected part area of Rome. We go for a, for a day, for example, with a path in mind, but also uh, going with the flow. And uh, we um, let the city talk. And the city uh, talked a lot in the sense that in the uh, we we, uh, we did three uh, long walking and uh, um, it happened a lot of things uh, very brutal because uh, Rome there are homeless uh, there are uh, uh, people at work uh, uh, Francesca. Uh, uh, passes to um, under a, a building uh, where there was uh, uh, the impalcature, a man at works, uh, where a, a man died uh, just uh, some hours before. So, but also uh, some moments of uh, beauty, um, the park of Rome, Maybe some of you knows uh, the, the big and beautiful parks of Rome. So the, the, the beauty of the, the nature. Um, and uh, yes, there is a sort of um, 
code of alphabet of this uh, kind of experience, but um, we we tried a lot not to represent, but to express uh, in a imminent uh, uh, starting uh, point. Thank you. Maybe I just go back to you. Uh, Thank you. <laughs> when we when we hear when 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 we hear the term machine now today, because I think uh, the the vocabulary was in Gatari's vocabulary with the term machine began in the anti edips no. And I think they they had a kind of Soviet imagination in which, uh, for example, the, the term factory had a, a kind of very positive uh, sense. So uh, the machine, in, so you, you said, so yes, the, in thousand mil. Plato's, I think they introduced another type of imagination, something like botanic imagination. Yes, right. but they still uh, conserved uh, this Soviet imagination in Southern Plato. But it's true that uh, now I, it's very, I'm very curious if. The term Soviet, the term uh, machine, marked by the, the, the its uh, Soviet imagination, how function in the actual context. So no, I, I'm just, it's not your point, the very main point, but uh, just. Uh, I, I had something. I was thinking uh, that uh, when uh, we talk about uh, machine learning, uh, for instance, uh, uh, we always imagine something that is um, like uh, hyper abstract, uh, that, that is not rooted in, uh, in matter or something like that. But uh, in fact, uh, it's just like uh, uh, this. Uh, uh, reference to machine in machine learning uh, hides something of the machine uh, function. So when when we uh, uh, say something uh, like uh, machine learning in, uh, in in the real sense, we are saying that there is this machine and there is this uh, uh, things that is rooted in master yes. and like that, yes. and can uh, and it is possible that machine can't uh, function anymore or something like that. Something I also don't the, know. Maybe. Also, the machine of the machine learning are crazy. Yeah, <laughs> in some way, could be crazy. Could be crazy. Okay. Yes, in in Italy, Sara Baranzoni uh, works on the. Um, in uh, she is one of the director of the the Les, uh, the Lesiana. Mm. You. And uh, she works on this uh, kind of this topic, but she is very critical mm -hmm. against this. Uh... Okay. <laughs> a very good question. Maybe it's a, uh, maybe it's a small easy thing. Um, so there seems to be some analogy and some difference between the the. Uh, the Lazian ideal machine, the same line of questions, and then the, because it seems similar in some aspects to like the, the Foucaultian idea of dispositive apparatus, which in this case it seems to be like more con concrete in terms of like the, uh, it's like about architecture or administration and so on, but also knowledge, so like it's a realm of expression. And maybe one difference is that, like, he's stressing the self-reproducing, like, as the, sort of the controlling, so it's uh, uh, the less free. But, but, but then he's also stating that, in a way, like, it's like the kind of discourse, the kind of like apparatus, which also like all these like, contradictions within himself, so it's creaking, it's not a very solid structure. So I was wondering if they actually had some 
interchange in these definitions? And like it's a, what, what would you make of similarities and differences between these two very similar methods? No, I, I think that they are uh, connected and uh, the dispositivo is apparatus. Uh, uh, dispositif is sometimes translated as apparatus. Uh, I checked and there's not only one. Okay. So, yes, there, there is a link uh, and uh, they, they, they work together in the, about the question of prisons. Uh, Deleuze and Foucault and uh, Deleuze uh, wrote uh, a book uh, um, a text uh, on, on Foucault, uh, very, a, a beautiful text on Foucault when, uh, when he died. And there is this idea of the decentralization of subject that, that is uh, working uh, in, in the two uh, thought. Uh, maybe um, I, I would say that in Foucault, uh, there is uh, more attention to the um, historical process. That's a uh, formula that uh, we can use uh, very short, but thank you. Thank you. Um, beginning of your paper, I had the impression that you were looking for a way to over another way to overcome non dualism. So if substance is the imminence, to Spinoza, then transcendence would introduce a kind of dualism. Transcendence needs to be overcome. Now, I have a question about that. I'm going to jump to the end of the paper about the abstract uh, machine. Um, where is the non duality in the abstract what is, machine? What is, sorry, the novelty? Where is the non duality? Non duality. In the abstract machine. It's in the flow, right? So that would mean that duality would be in the interruptions, which are the step-by-step -step execution of particular programs or a particular machine. The problem is you can't have a flow without interruptions. It can't exist in this world. Therefore, to go back to the beginning, perhaps transcendence is not something to be overcome or, or absorbed into imminence, but something to be Recontextualize. Now, going to the question of the no self that just came up, um, there is a kind of similarity to this in, in uh, among certain Japanese philosophers. I, I know it from Takeuchi Yoshinori, but I think that's from somewhere else originally, where you begin with, um, with imminence, um, which is kind of an unreflected non duality. Uh, but it's, uh, it's, it's monism, but, all, but yes. equal pluralism. Kind of naive monism, imminent. And then you go to transcendence where you get duality in thinking. You have God against nature, the I and the thou, the mind and the body, uh, the thought and the world. So you get this imminent. But the next step for them is not to return to the original um, non duality, the original naivete. But what they call transdescendence. And transdescendence on the model of, um, of the kenosis of God, so if you will, is in not rising above, transcending, rising above this dualistic world, but entering more deeply into it. So you return to a richer idea of imminence than you had before. And where transcendence becomes a whole and becomes a necessary means, a useful skill, without which, as I said before, there'd be no flow mm -hmm. without machines to show you the flow by interrupting it. So it's a, you're returning to the original imminence, the original, I you say whatever, the original monism, but richer. And because you know what transcendence can do, and you know what it cannot. You can see it and use it, and at the same time, you can see through it and see through its limitations. Okay, I, I would say that uh, um, here the problem is the idea is uh, uh, that the task of thought is that one of thinking immanence, the in, in, a, in an immanent and being, thought and being in an immanent way. 
And it is a task because immanence is not um, something at the origin. It is something that you have to uh, reach. It is a task because human being is cut by transcendence. And this is uh, something that, uh, for example, Felicia would uh, call language. But we, we also, um, we also um, can think of um, uh, the, the, the Kantian subject in the European uh, tradition. So we have, uh, um, at first, this separation, and we had to uh, reach uh, the, the possibility of uh, uh, immanence. And so in, this is my, my idea of Deleuze and Guattari. They are... Uh, so the original state of human being is one of... It's one of separation. Separation. One of, and, and also the animality about which Felice talked yesterday uh, is not uh, for Deleuze and Guattari being animal, but uh, becoming animal. This is a concept, devenir animal. Uh, we have to become animal Absolutely. because we yeah. lost our animality with language, with uh, uh, with our uh, uh, being in this world. So, um, when you say original, say it mean like the, the chronologically original, or because oh, this would be really a big point of separation from the direction that most of the philosophy in the East takes. Yes, I think so. Original state. In, in fact, yesterday at dinner, <laughs> I, I, I would like to, to, to when we, we talked about the um, Illuminazione original. Uh, Right. Okay. No, because uh, in this kind of thought, uh, uh, the, the, there is the, the, the structuralism, the Lacan. Uh, Guattari uh, worked with Lacan, the psychoanalyst, and the idea is a human being that is um, Scisso, separated at the origin. So okay. immanence is a task. So consciousness by its very nature is separated, dualistic. Yes. You have to overcome that. Human, human consciousness. Human consciousness, yes. And uh, I, I would think there are moments in the day or in life or in moments of wonder where consciousness is yes. dual, but not dualistic. Yes, there is a. Yes, yes, there, 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 uh, hopefully <laughs> there is. But the idea is uh, that uh, it is something that we lost. This idea that um, of this quotation, um, it, it is a furniture that we are forever rearranging. The idea is we are, uh, there is neurosis. <laughs> This is uh, really um, inside the... The, 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 the problem, problem is, it seems to me that if, if you have this flow, which is non-dualistic, and the machine, you know, the, the operations of the machine interrupt it to make it visible, if things didn't begin with the machine, the flow was there before the machine. That seems to me the original state. And that's the... the, the interruption. You can't interrupt something if you're in the beginning of it, right? Interrupt something? Um, yeah. No, I yes, I try to say the second uh, yeah, yeah. part of my uh, answer. So, first of all, uh, the question of immanence. I, I don't think that immanence in this kind of uh, framework is something uh, originally and, for example, a sort of biologically uh, animality of a human being. It is uh, a um, a possibility, it is a, a task that we have to um, become in some way. But obviously, uh, there is this possibility uh, for human being, and in my opinion, it is an experience that uh, is more uh, frequent uh, in some practices, uh, something like this one, or something uh, uh, 
about which uh, Felicia was uh, talking yesterday. Um, but these experiences are, uh, in a way, very punctual, very with a beginning and the end. But in another sense, it uh, um, leave a, a, an atmosphere, a, a, una traccia, a trace in our life. Uh, and so it is something like you uh, said yesterday, the uh, andate di oscillazione. Uh, but it is, uh, it is interesting before, because yesterday, um, in the talk uh, of uh, Pier Giacomo, uh, he proposes one difference between Nishida and Ersh. I, I don't know, nor, okay, nell'uno nell'altro. And um, one of the difference is that for Ersh, um, there is this violent activity. It is a struggle. And I think that in our tradition, we start with dualism and we, we start with transcend, with separation, and we are trying to um, ar arrive to the immanence. But obviously it's not logical and uh, neither something that you can grasp and uh, have in a uh, definitive way. In this context, uh, all of these concepts are the strange invention. They talk about uh, characters, like literary characters, conceptual inventions, to think of um, concepts, uh, questions, uh, in, uh, things, uh, uh, that are uh, um, possibly something that lead to uh, transcendence in an immanent way. So uh, how can we talk about the concept of form? Because a form interrupts the flow. And so it is uh, an, ex an expression that uh, uh, is a territory, but this territory is open up. How can we talk about subject? Because in the plane of immanence, the subject, if you talk about the subject, the subject is separated. And so they invented, at the end, uh, the, the, the question of machine is also the question of movement on, of subjectivation. And so that's true. Uh, it's, not, it's not a flow of, all uh, um, liscio, mm -hmm. because if uh, we, we want a movement, a, a becoming, uh, we need uh, uh, some level in a sense. So how we can uh, think about this uh, possibility of uh, go and go and go and go without reintroducing dialectic terms. Because here, uh, the very enemy is Hegel. The, the idea that there is uh, uh, a movement of dialectical movement that reassume in a synthetic way, the, the, they, they talked about a false movement, a false becoming. And so, yes, that's true that we, when we, we talk about this uh, plane of immanence, it's difficult, uh, th there are a lot of difficulties uh, um, when we want to think, uh, they tried uh, with all their mm, tools, uh, uh, expressive artistic in a sense, because this style is a, a sort of uh, also literary uh, language. They try to invent new words literally new words uh, or new meanings uh, for ancient words to reintroduce this uh, uh, concept that rightly you, you say, but this is something that uh, uh, belongs to another uh, 
idea uh, without uh, reintroducing uh, dualism. And uh, so, rhizome, for example, or machine, abstract machine, and so on. Uh, it's uh, how can we um, how can we um, really uh, we can dispiegare this uh, unique plane? How can we populate uh, this unique plane without uh, separation? But uh, it's um, also true that in uh, um, what is philosophy, they say uh, the transcendence for human being is always there and uh, reappear. And uh, so it's uh, a negotiation in a, some, in a sense. 